Hi everyone, as people who've seen my video on the British Conservative Party's climate change policy know, one of the things that I've always wanted to use this channel for is to counteract misinformation, as well as produce useful educational content. And lately some very, very strange claims have been made by a number of paleontology videos, including on multiple very popular top 10 lists, which you may have seen Harris Sang react to on his channel. As well as an assortment of utterly bizarre, supposedly educational videos focusing on the animal itself, which state that a second morphotype or subspecies of the famous giant extinct shark Megalodon existed, and attribute a number of different behaviours and feeding strategies to this second morphotype from the true Oterus orcacaracles megalodon. This morphotype, which the videos call the Red Megalodon, confused me to no end, since I couldn't understand why it wasn't being classed as a separate species of Atodus, if its morphology and behaviours were seemingly so radically different from Megalodon. But something else confused me too. The videos all make claims about what paleontologists think about this animal, but I have never once seen a single shark paleontologist talk about it. I do talk to a shark paleontologist later on in this video, but before we get there, the first thing I did to investigate the situation was to search for the phrase Red Megalodon on Google Scholar, since that should help find where it was brought up first in the academic literature that these videos could have used as a source. Oh dear. The only result I could find for the Red Megalodon in the academic literature was a bizarrely worded essay on the themes of an episode of Love, Death, and Robots, which doesn't even spell Otidus correctly, and kinda reads like it might have been written by AI, but the episode does feature a red-coloured ghost megalodon, so maybe these guys read a review of an episode that featured a red ghost megalodon? I don't know. It's not relevant right now. So, before we start delving into the details of what these videos are saying, we need to ask, what was megalodon? Megalodon was the largest shark ever known to have existed, and lived from around 23 to 3.6 million years ago. It's known from a lot of teeth and parts of a vertebral column, which give us some clues about its morphology. The precise relationships of Megalodon, including what genus it should be placed in, have varied quite a bit over time, but it's now generally accepted to belong to the genus Otodus, belonging to the extinct family Otodontidae, which were members of the Lamniformes. Uh, the Lamniformes are the group of sharks which contain many of the most iconic sharks in the modern ocean, like things like great whites, salmon sharks, goblin sharks, thresher sharks, basking sharks, mega mouth sharks, and a whole bunch of others. And we now know, thanks to the fossil record of their evolution, which we'll talk about a bit later on, that they're nowhere near as closely related to the great white shark as we always used to think they were. Now, until recently, most studies which estimated the size of Megalodon did so based on scaling up the proportions of the great white shark, but a recent study by Philip Stearns and colleagues, which I've attached in the comments, provides evidence that those studies are probably actually underestimates of Megalodon's true length, and suggested that it might have actually exceeded 20 meters in length, though probably would have been a lot more slender proportionally than a great white. Now, a study by S. Rowe and colleagues in 2008 estimated the bite force of Megalodon, effectively by scaling up the proportions of a great white shark, assuming the same bite angle of around 33 degrees, and using published body mass estimates of between 48 and 103 metric tons for Megalodon's body mass. Uh, this study estimated that Megalodon 
would have a bite force at the back of the mouth of between 108,000 and 182,000 newtons, which means its bite would have been at least 23 times stronger than that of the largest known verified great white shark. Now, this study from 2020 by Jack Cooper and colleagues used the known material from Megalodon combined with morphometric analyses and linear regressions from known relatives and estimated that Megalodon had a head that was roughly 4.65 meters long, a dorsal fin that was approximately 1.6 meters tall, and a tail fin almost 4 meters high. We also know that Megalodon appears to have primarily fed on whales. Now, interestingly, none of the papers I looked at discussed Megalodon having two morphotypes, one of which could have been the red Megalodon subspecies that these videos are referring to. So I decided to have a more thorough look into whether or not Megalodon has any distinct morphotypes. But this gets complicated because some of these videos claim that the red megalodon morphotype was smaller than the true Otodus megalodon, while others of these videos claim that it was in fact much larger. I was able to find one paper from back in 1983, way back when megalodon was thought to belong to the genus Carcharodon, uh, meaning it was thought to belong to the same genus as the great white shark, which had some very interesting information. See, this paper, which I've linked in the description, talks about how the early specimens of Megalodon from the early Miocene were then classed as their own subspecies, which was then referred to as Carcharodon Megalodon tubutensis. Now, this subspecies has since been elevated to being recognized as its own species, Otodus tubutensis, and based on the morphology of its teeth and how they change over time, it's now thought to be the direct ancestor of Megalodon, with the two species briefly coexisting after Megalodon had speciated from a population of Otodus tubutensis. So if Otodus tubutensis is not recognized as a subspecies of Megalodon anymore, do we have any evidence that it was red? Well, first I tried to find information on pigmentation being recovered from fossils of Megalodon, but all of the articles I could find were about a snail, which also has the species name Megalodon, so that doesn't help. So I looked up Otodus tubutensis pigment on Google Scholar and found nothing. Zero articles at all. And since none of the paleo art that I can find of Otodus tubutensis illustrates it as being red, I can assume that there just isn't anything in the literature to indicate that this guy was red either. So, to actually investigate what these videos are talking about in detail, it became apparent that I needed to actually properly watch one, and go through it in this video. But which video should I watch when Red Megalodon has appeared in so many? The most popular video which claims to educate people about the Red Megalodon is one by Top Discovery, which has 894,000 views, but the longest video on Red Megalodon is this one by Ultimate Discovery, which has 101,000 views. Now, my initial plan was to go through the Ultimate Discovery video, because it was longer, and being longer, it should be able to provide much more evidence to back up its case about this morphotype. But nope, the video is actually a compilation video, providing questionable information about an assortment of random extinct large aquatic animals. That said, there is a brief segment on the red megalodon in this video, which I'll briefly show here. Beneath the sun-drenched waves of the deep ocean, a creature of unfathomable terror lurked. The red megalodon, measuring 40 to 45 feet in length, held a sinister secret. Surprisingly, the smaller, red-skinned variant proved to be the more dangerous predator. With unmatched agility and speed, it possessed a stealthy prowess, unlike its larger, gray-skinned counterpart. 
The Red Megalodon mastered the art of underwater maneuvering, blending seamlessly with its surroundings and ambushing swift, elusive prey. Its smaller size allowed it to snatch food from the jaws of a gray megalodon, evading any pursuit. Their colossal advantage, coupled with eight-inch teeth, ensured successful hunts. Yet the most daunting aspect lay in their herd mentality. Scientists speculated that these crimson giants gathered in groups, utilizing strength in numbers to overpower their victims. Just one red megalodon was already a formidable foe, so imagine the sheer terror of multiple blood-red behemoths patrolling the depths. But how did the red megalodon evolve to be smaller yet deadlier? What drove their uncanny ability to coordinate attacks? This crimson hunter of the deep-held secrets that both fascinated and terrified, leaving humanity to grapple with the mysteries that lay beneath the waves. So, according to this clip, the so-called Red Megalodon Morphotype reached a length of 40 to 45 feet, or around 12 to 13 meters, and evolved high agility and maneuverability when compared to Otodus Megalodon Sensu Stricto. The video also explicitly states that this Morphotype has red skin. Now, if you were expecting a channel with 544,000 subscribers who brag about being a reliable source of information on their homepage to, um, you know, cite their sources so that we can find out which scientists they were referencing when they said, Scientists speculated that these crimson giants gathered in groups, utilizing strength in numbers to overpower their victims. They don't. No papers are cited in the description, or show up on screen for me to find out where they got their information from. So, since that video was a complete bust, I guess we need to look at the top discovery video. Oh no. First, the video shows an asteroid impact when referencing the extinction of Megalodon, and this is utterly bizarre. For those who might not be familiar with it, the Megalodon is a huge prehistoric animal that dwells in the sea. Said to be multiple times larger than any sea creature known today, although it sadly went extinct many years ago. Since Megalodon's extinction seems to have happened around 3.6 million years ago and resulted from a number of climatic and environmental factors and the disappearance of prey species. Honestly, Wikipedia has a great summary of this, I don't feel like I need to go into it, other than to say that Megalodon definitely was not killed by a big meteorite. Like, there's tons of papers on the different stuff that might have killed Megalodon, just follow the links on Wikipedia. The video also claims after that that Megalodon coexisted with Tyrannosaurus Rex. Basically, while the massive Tyrannosaurus Rex was the king of the land, the Megalodon was the undisputed king of the sea. But this is absurd, because T. rex lived from 68 to 66 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous, going extinct around 43 million years before Megalodon first appears on the fossil record. Top Discovery has 897,000 subscribers, and they aren't even doing basic fact-checking? Still, I'm sure that when this video actually gets to the Red Megalodon, they'll actually cite some sources and not make up random nonsense, right? Right? Wrong. The video makes some claims about how Megalodon hunted, which I have been able to find nothing in the scientific literature to back up. Megalodon, however, would be much more aggressive, and of course, given its size, the Megalodon did not necessarily know how to be stealthy. Not that it really needed stealth, the animal was more into brute force than any other fish. The Megalodon's preferred diet would be large marine animals, and according to scientists, it would most likely take apart its prey in a systematic fashion, tearing its fins and tail before devouring it, and then, while great whites usually draw their prey under the ocean, the Megalodon would attack from underneath, tearing its prey wide open before taking it apart and feasting on its suck. Before making some utterly bizarre interpretations about why the animal went extinct, attributing its extinction to its weak bones? Don was a pretty large and ruthless animal. Most scientists claim that it didn't have overly strong bones. They believe that this, along with the natural evolution of the world, must have been the reason why the Megalodon went extinct. But it's a shark. It's cartilaginous. It doesn't have bones. They say that this claim came from scientists, 
But what scientists told you that a cartilaginous fish from an entire lineage of very successful cartilaginous fishes just happened to go extinct, but because its skeleton was made of cartilage? This, this makes no sense. Anyway, the video then finally starts talking about the Red Megalodon over five minutes in, and makes effectively the same claims as the Ultimate Discovery video about the Red Megalodon being a smaller, faster, more agile variant than what this video calls the Grey Megalodon. Animals of the sea, the Megalodon, were not homogenous. You had different variations, with most of the classifications being based on size and stature. To kick things off, we have the Grey Megalodon. These were usually the largest of the bunch, with bigger bodies and more ferocious appetites. These guys ate pretty much anything, and would just as well show up on the scene and have everyone scamper away, because they were so huge. Then we have the Red Megalodon. They were not as large as the Grey Megalodon, coming in at about 40 to 45 feet in length. However, they were actually the more dangerous of the two, interestingly enough. And if you think about it like this, whatever type that it was, the Megalodon was probably the biggest animal in the seas. However, that same size is what made the Grey Megalodon such a formidable force to be reckoned with, and it was also one of its biggest disadvantages. Because these animals were so large, maneuvering in the ocean was quite the challenge, and hunting elusive and fast prey would be most impossible. To that effect, grey megalodons were mostly lazy and slow, and when they did eventually eat, it would mostly be animals that were very slow at evasion. Or perhaps it would just simply bully another animal into eating its food. On the flip side, though, the red megalodon was much more agile and quick due to its smaller size. It was able to move underwater easily, hide in almost plain sight, and even hunt some of the quickest and most elusive of prey. And if you want to know the real kicker, due to the disparities in size and speed, the red megalodon could actually snatch food from the mouth of a grey megalodon and run away. I would like to remind you that neither of these two distinct morphotypes brought up in the video came up in any of the scientific papers that we've looked at. Much like the last video, this one also claims that paleontologists are claiming that Red Megalodon used a so-called herd mentality. Red Megalodons had teeth measuring about 8 inches in length, so hunting was never an issue in any sort of way. And another significant reason why the animals were so dangerous was that they had a herd mentality. According to scientists, Red Megalodons would usually gather and hunt in groups, taking advantage of the strength in numbers approach to overshadow their prey. I do not know why they're using the word herd, a word normally used for herbivores as opposed to pack or shoal. But anyway, I searched Google Scholar for the phrase cooperative hunting and otodus, and I found one book which doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything that we're looking at in this video. So I did that search again, but with Carcaracles, and I got one reference that actually did mention Megalodon. Heck yeah, maybe this will talk about the Red Megalodon, its cooperative hunting behaviour, and validate everything that this video is telling us, right? Right? Wrong. You see, the parts of this paper which talk about cooperative hunting specifically refer to Megalodon as being a solitary hunter, and refer to cooperative hunting in modern-day orcas, and how predatory whales, like orcas, with cooperative hunting strategies have replaced, and may have contributed to the extinction of, Megalodon as the apex predators in the ocean ecosystem. You would think that in a paper which talks about this, if we had any evidence for cooperative hunting in Megalodon, it would have come up in this paragraph. But it doesn't. But you know, this video uses an unusual phrase, herd mentality. Uh, maybe they're using that specific wordage because it came from a paper. And maybe I mean too broad by searching for the genera and not the species specifically. So let's run a Google Scholar search for the phrase herd mentality, and megalodon. The first result is some kind of irrelevant court decision, but the second is a 2022 book called The Social Lives of Animals by Ashley Ward. So, I very illegally totally bought a copy of this book, and guess what? The only reference to Megalodon in it is a brief reminder that Megalodon is in fact extinct, which a lot of videos on YouTube somehow don't seem to know. I highly recommend checking out the channel AVNJ for a ton of videos debunking Megalodon's survival. Uh, so I tried searching Red Megalodon, and no matches came up whatsoever. Anyway, I watched the rest of the Top Discovery video, and the next few minutes of it basically repeated all of the same claims that, that we already went through, while the second half of the video was entirely about extinct marine mammals, and had nothing to do with the Red Megalodon at all. 
So what now? Do we just assume that all of these popular supposed science communication channels are just lying to their audiences of hundreds of thousands of people and misinforming them about the ecology of an important apex predator in the history of life on Earth? Yes, probably, but just to be triply sure, I turned to Twitter and quickly found people who were saying that there's a red megalodon in the Ark games, and maybe these guys just took a video game monster at face value as being real. One of the responses was from the fantastic YouTuber and friend of the channel Rick Raptor, who saw my tweets and was utterly shocked to find out that so many videos were talking about Red Megalodon without any evidence, and came to the same conclusions that Harris Sang had come up with in his responses to the Red Megalodon videos, i.e. that these guys had just got an AI to write their script, and that this AI might have just seen this size chart, which uses a grey-coloured megalodon silhouette to represent the maximum size estimate for the species, and a red-coloured megalodon silhouette to represent a more conservative size estimate for the series, and the AI might have just assumed that these images were meant to represent different colour and size varieties of megalodon. And I totally agree. Like, this chart shows a big grey meg and a little red meg, exactly like the top discovery video talks about. Now, at this point, another player joins the discussion. Shark nerd paleontologist extraordinaire Tyler Greenfield. Finally, someone with experience and knowledge. He actually disagreed with Rick here, arguing that since other videos that aren't the two we watched in this video claims that the red megalodon is bigger than the standard megalodon, the AI scriptwriters were probably just rearranging a bunch of text without it necessarily being based on this image. Now, I don't know which of them is right, but I do agree with them that the Red Megalodon is probably something that was just made up by AI. Was it made up from that chart? Was it made up from the Ark video games? Was it made up from Love, Death and Monsters? I have no idea. But just to be doubly sure that the Red Megalodon wasn't actually based on anything, I asked Tyler, as a paleontologist with an interest in sharks, for an on-the-record opinion that I could use in this video. At that time, Tyler had only seen videos which claimed that the Red Megalodon was larger than the Grey one, because yes, as I mentioned, these videos are in no way consistent, but his point still stands. So here's what he said. I can confirm that there is no evidence for a larger, redder variation of Megalodon. While no fossilized pigments are known, its coloration was probably countershaded like its modern relatives. Based on lamnids, the darker color on top could have been shades of black or gray or blue or purple, while the lighter color below would have been white. There may have been some lighter spots on the dorsal side and some darker spots on the ventral side too. There's also the possibility of pigment loss due to leucism or albinism, which could have led to a piebald or entirely white coloration in rare individuals. That pretty much covers the plausible range of colors for megalodon. A uniform bright red coloration is completely out of the question. If you're looking for a scientific reference, this paper briefly discusses countershading in megalodon. Uh, that paper, by the way, is one of the ones that we already looked at earlier in this video. Now, obviously, we've now thoroughly debunked the existence of the second megalodon morphotype. But if there actually was a larger and a smaller morphotype of Otodus megalodon, what would it look like to be attacked by both at the same time? <laughs> So that's pretty much it. There is no red megalodon, there is no evidence for red megalodon, it was nonsensical pseudoscience and probably made up by AI. That's it. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon, or feel free to donate to support the channel on Ko-fi. Huge thanks go out to Tyler Greenfield and Rick Raptor for their thoughts at the end of the video, and to the excellent YouTuber Planner Walk for throwing her blahages at me 
and filming the live action segments of this video, as well as for her advice on improving audio quality. I've put links to her channel as well as to Rick Raptor's channel and Harris Sang's channel in the description. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons Jean and Eric Feenstra. My next video will be another little fun, educational, light-hearted one, going over a little bit more misinformation. Because my last video really took a lot out of me and it was stressful to work on, so I want to just have a little bit more fun with this channel for a little while, uh, and then we'll get to more sort of serious video essays um, in the near future. As always, patrons get to hear the unedited audio recordings for each video first, and you get to see previews of my artwork and get to vote on future video essays. The next ones are some I've already decided on, but you will get a chance to vote on some of the bigger ones soon. And I hope you enjoy everything that I'm going to be creating in the very near future. I've been DJ King, signing off.